Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel and I've been up to some interesting things over the last couple of weeks since I filmed one of these episodes actually. Last week I took my boyfriend Louis down to Brighton, my hometown if you didn't know, so that I could show him a little bit more about like where I've come from, who I am and where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually a lovely little getaway to kind of readdress some of the things that I've been holding on to for a little while as well. Driving around Brighton, we just kind of went to some of the places that I used to hang out. And it kind of reminded me a little bit of like friends and things that I've had in my life. And it was just a really like well-rounded, lovely little experience. I've been kind of feeling a little bit in this weird place mentally recently. And it's basically every time I have my trip to Raylan injection, I actually missed my last dose by about 10 days, which is probably why I'm feeling so like mentally in a confusing headspace, should we say? Oh! So it was lovely to visit Brighton and see some nostalgia and also bring someone new in my life to experience who I am. With that being said, my lovelies, are you in for a new experience today? Because it's time for another episode of this something about Miriam. This stressful, bizarre show in which... What even is the premise? The premise is in the last episode. It's they're going to reveal she's trans to these dating contestants. So one of the top comments on the last episode is by Sean. And they say, keep up the fight against Endemol or whatever their name is. They're obviously ashamed of this show, but that's just tough. Things like this should be shamed openly so that it prevents any more from being produced. And I cannot agree anymore. I cannot agree more with that. I very luckily didn't actually get any issues with the last episode. That's so far. I am sure I will be battling copyright with this season and this series until the very, very final episode and I can do a what happened after this show. Luckily, currently as it stands, my last episode has not been affected. That doesn't mean to say that it won't be in the future. So my lovelies, make sure you get your beverage at the ready. Today I am on the Monster Ultra Fiesta. It is my favorite. It's kind of like a sugar-free mango. It's delicious. And are you ready to strap in and strap on to watch? There's something about this debauchery that should never have been produced. I also want you guys to know that I have a TikTok now. So please, over on TikTok, feel free to send me any videos relating to plastic surgery, relating to shocking moments in reality TV, shocking moments in America's Next Top Model or anything like that. Feel free to send it over on TikTok. It is XX Luxaria and maybe you will be featured in an upcoming video. It's time for episode four, girls. Oh, even this Tonight, music is ludicrous. Explosive dating experience Explosions, of a girl. Continues. Oh my God. We're Did we see that before? Of a lifetime continues. We're down to... I swear you could get like some like... Creative comedy writers who are all very like double entendre and they would never come up with the level of puns in this show. Four hunky guys in our millionaire's mansion. Four all left. Oh yes, in the last episode, Mark got voted out of the, um, the hacienda. <laughs> what are they calling it? The villa. The, the bloody mess is what it is. He got voted out of the mess. And he was very, how should we say it? I felt like he came across as quite a sort of unlikable person. Should we say? Should we say that? You can finally see my 100k silver plaque on display in my YouTube videos now. I think I should put it on the wall though at some point. We're in the heart of our gorgeous Latino model, Miriam. On offer to- So actually, the word Latino has been kind of spoken about quite a lot in the comments of my previous episodes here. So in this world, in 2022, I am under the full impression that Latino only refers to the masculine parts of uh, the Spanish language, or people from Latin countries. I believe they should be using the word Latina to refer to Miriam, but I do not know whether that's production being like, she's Latino because she's a fucking or dev. <laughs> Or if they're just generally uneducated or understand that, you know, that you don't refer to everyone with a single word like that in other languages. Very well articulated Lux area, truly the only librarian of our times. A winner, a week's cruise on a luxury yacht with Miriam as a company luxury and yacht. 10,000 oh, pounds spending dear. money. What a hideous the belt. The highs, the lows. Oh, that was embarrassing, man. The jealousy. Jealous. The rival. <gasps> oh my goodness. And the passion. 
One guy faces eviction every week, but this is no ordinary dating show uh. because there's something about Miriam. There's the something about yeah, know. she's got a degree. I wasn't born as a girl. I was born as a man. Lies. Not correct. They played you, sis. You were 21. So 2000. There she is in a hotel. Beautiful. Sunglasses in the seaside. Oh my god. Also, weirdly enough, since the last episode of this show that I've put live, I have actually been parasailing with my boyfriend, which is exactly the date that they went on in the last episode of There's Something About Miriam. It was both stunning and exhilarating. But it was a wonderful experience. I don't really know. <laughs> Does life imitate art? I wonder what sort of extreme sport we're doing this week. There's something about Miriam. Seven days ago, six eligible Seven bachelors were introduced to Miriam, right. a Mexican bombshell looking for love. Recruitment consultant Toby was the first to go. Goodbye, to make the right moves during his fishing date with Miriam. Fishing and date. Oh my eviction, God, they were fishing. I, did, you, did you get that they were fishing? I don't remember them fishing. I remember them being on a boat and having a date. I didn't remember them fishing. Did they catch anything? Herpes. This woman is dirty. Songwriter Mark ran out of luck as oh, Miriam decided that he was for you. next for the chop. That leaves just the four chop. boys. Tom, a 23-year-old lifeguard. To Oma. Aaron, a 22-year-old chef. On. Tot, a 22-year-old martial arts instructor. And Dom, De a 28-year-old um. Royal Marine. It's On tonight's Marine show, go. a new arrival throws the competition wide open. You've got a, new a magician. The boys get dangerously close to the truth. Oh my and God. emotions run high amongst Miriam and her suitors. I'm getting jealous now. She'll think he's a jumped up arrogant Aussie prick, to be honest. Oh! The tea is scalding, sis. And that's the Darjeeling. So, I don't like the way that they were like, gets dangerously close to the truth, because that is truly, that's exactly what it is, I suppose. Actually, he wasn't wrong in saying it that way, I guess, this ridiculous presenter of this ridiculous show. To say it so cavalierly is so problematic, because yes, it actually, it puts everyone in that situation in danger, because Miriam could very easily be like violently attacked and also the guys are not being given any level of informed consent as to what this show actually is so it's ever it's violence against everyone in the show granted there will be levels of violence but it's just like how did no one think that this was a problem I'm very... Still to this day, episode four, I am still so shocked that no one considered that this show was uh, an accident waiting to happen. On a completely unrelated note, does anyone who has long hair, like, it's always, like, fluffy and uncontrollable on the day that you wash it and want to do something? I don't know why, but I'm just like... <laughs> it's really annoying me today. <laughs> Here she is, Miriam. I'm on the game. Well... We've reached the halfway stage here at the Passion Palace and none of the guys are any the wiser. In fact, some of them are quite smitten, especially Dom, who turned on the charm during his date with Miriam. That's not funny. He's like, oh, in fact, some of them, some of them, if you can believe it, are smitten with Miriam. Of course, some of them are going to fall in love because you put them in this high pressure, high hormonal, high adrenaline situation, plied them with alcohol and said, look at this gorgeous woman. Of course, some of them are going to catch feelings and things like that. So it's... it's it's ridiculous that we're like, oh, look, look at them doing that. I can't wait to see how this turns out when we know exactly how this is going to turn out. And Tom, who spent 10 minutes getting pretty intimate with our Latino babe two nights ago. Tom may have proved that to be the early so favourite, but he and indeed all the guys were forced to rethink their game plans with the unexpected arrival of a stranger last night. A stranger in the... In the... Wake up, boys! boys! If you dare... If you dared, if you dared for a second, whilst I was fully asleep at 1am in the morning, came in, clapping, turning on the lights, you would not have a head left, sir. Death! Severed. We've got a new contestant. Miriam Nobody cares. The boys have bonded Nobody a cares, too well sis. And has decided that a new face might refocus the guy's attention on her. So now he's going to be and assaulted. And she's chosen six foot four Australian salesman, Rhett. Sadly, after another heavy night, the lads are in no state to give Rhett a warm British welcome Brett when he arrives at 1 a.m. No one cares. You guys are fucking pathetic. Lightweight drinkers. Rhett arrived. Uh, we were actually all passed out when he arrived. Unfortunately, he tried to wake us up, apparently. Hey, come on. 
He doesn't know who you are. Why are you like grabbing him by the leg? Softies. I thought that tomorrow was a dream. I was so hammered. I was in bed. I'm just, I've just arrived. What is happening? What is, I'm sorry, what is happening? Why has this man just come in and like assaulted these men, basically? It's just like, oh, I'm here at 1 a.m. What do you want them to do? You want them to get out of bed half asleep, half drunk, going, oh, I'm so glad there's another contest. Hello, how are you? What's your name? Where'd you come from? My God, there's room for everybody. Let's just say that. There wasn't even like a big build up. There wasn't even like a, oh my goodness, who's arriving on the boat in the distance? Is it a new contestant? Is this another tr- Or dev. No, they were just like, here he is, climbing into the bedroom at one in the morning, clapping and turning on the lights and then tickling their feet. What is this show? What is this? No budget, sis. Right, how is he going to accost the rest of them? From London, you're not dreaming, by the way. Apparently I was the only one he could wake, or semi-wake. I was, sound like a caveman, and I was grunting. Come on, man. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Talk, talk. What hey, is, that's a bit of action. What does he want them so to do? All of us have been, uh, a bit, oh. He actually went to bed about meeting anybody. And then we woke up this morning, we were just getting in the shower, and, and Dom shouts out, who the fuck are you? And I was totally shocked when we found the FNG this morning, the fucking new guy, do you know what I mean? Um, it throws the whole game wide open again. What, it, what, what is happening? The guys hardly know anything about you, but we need to know everything about you. Right, come on well, then. Mate, uh, 24 years of age, born and bred in Sydney. Right. Uh, over in London. I've been in central London for three years now and uh, work in the IT. Never trust a straight man without any lip skulls. <laughs> and uh, personally, I just go out. And oh, look at that hair. That hair is so, so early 2000s. He will have had that like Max Hold VO5 gel. No, thank you. Maybe even the gel spray. What an iconic moment in fashion history. Have, have a run a mark and have a great time. So how do you think you're going to impress Miriam? Well, I'm just going to have to try and sweet talk her as much as I can and, you know, get her aside and, you know, have a bit of a chat to her and, and tell her all about me and all the crazy and fun things that I get up to and, you know, hopefully we'll... I'm just so crazy and fun. I'm going to pull her to one side, get her on her own and just tell her how crazy I am. Do you know what women love? Do you know what women love? <laughs> Do you know what women love more than anything is being singled out, pulled to one side, away from their friends, and being told how crazy you are. I've got a bucket of piss, sweetie. We'll click and, you know, we'll actually no doubt we'll click. Of course, Rhett is yet to meet the... This song is in America's Next Top Model. I like climbing. Hi, guys. Oh! Hey, how Boot doing? cut oh, jeans. Yeah, Miriam. Brett is my name. I think Miriam would probably quite like Brett. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen them talking this morning by the pool already, and they look. Someone outside has just discovered there's something about Miriam. <laughs> yeah, they look like they were getting on all right, so. Yeah, awesome. the heat is definitely on. Where were you this morning? We're having breakfast and all sorts of things. I was here getting ready for you guys. <laughs> Physically, he's good looking. But I'm not going for looks again, I'm going by personalities. Oh! So what do you do? She's got a brain. Uh, IT. Really? Uh, yeah, I work in IT in, uh, in, in the city. I think Miriam's a very attractive girl. I think, uh, you know, she's got the looks, know. she's got the stuff. I work in IT in the city, but what do you, like, what, what is IT in the city? Sex in the gout, IT in the city. She pisses when she boards. Sometimes she shorts. I uh, She's quite glamorous. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but there are loads of people like cheering outside and I have absolutely no idea what that means or who is doing that and why. All right then, keep your secrets. Good. I'm a bit worried. I'm a bit worried. So everyone's uh, worried about the newcomer. So I think she, she's going to like him. Bloody Aussie. You're from Australia? Yeah, yeah. from Sydney. Yeah. Have we got some yeah. casual yeah. xenophobia? For like three years. I like think that she, yeah, she'll so. probably get on with him. She likes that kind of Aussie surfer kind of... Uh, Cheesy kind of bloke, then <laughs> maybe she'll like him, but maybe not. You never know. But personally, I'm not, uh, I'm not too sure, really. Personally, I don't fancy him now. Rhett turning up would, would be a freak. Is um, like you know, he is a tall bloke. 
he's, he's strong, he's fit, he's a good looking bloke, he's an Aussie, you know, and... Uh, and uh, All of these men have said the same thing. They said like, oh, he's tall, he's really good looking, she won't know what's hit her, oh, she's re he's really tall and gorgeous. It's such a weird thing to have happen halfway through the competition to just throw this new guy in. Is this what dating show? Do you know, I haven't watched a lot of actual like dating shows. I'm guessing this is based somewhat on like The Bachelor or something like that. And I've not really watched, I suppose playing it straight was kind of like something like this in a weird way. Definitely by the same people. I never watched like a dating show from start to finish all the way through. I've caught like glimpses of it, of like The Bachelor and things like that, but never something as bizarre as this. Do they usually add like new people in to shock people? Playing it straight did. So maybe they're literally just copying that formula. You know, yeah, he's got a lot going for him. So he's definitely tough competition. These guys are all this like early the 20s guys are as well. Heading to the beach to compete in another of the physical challenges. Of course they are. ex-Sergeant Major Tanner who Miriam has asked along to help separate the men from the boys. Lovely. Welcome back to the beach, guys. Hello. Welcome to your first challenge rep. I'm sure the guys have told you there's no time Charmed. for sunbathing or sandcastles. What's it going to be, Tanner? Rep, you're from Australia, you must recognise this. However, this is not surfing. What you're going to do is show... He's pushed this entire board. ...up my ear. You're going to be dragged behind a boat. On this, I will time you. Whoever survives the longest can be deemed the winner. Who's going to be the winner? Me. Life jackets are a necessity for this challenge. The guys are going to be dragged behind a speedboat powered by a 115 brake horsepower engine. For and why? It's choppy out at sea. For what point? Locals have been known to stay on for several minutes, and Tanner is looking for times of at least 60 seconds. Oh, is Tanner going to take one of these guys? I don't understand. What's the point? He's like, oh, Tanner is looking for someone over 60 seconds. So, wait, but Miriam should decide. What? No, I, oh, oh, I'm very confused and dazed. I don't know what this show is. It's like having whiplash and then being forced to take LSD and laxatives all at the same time. Unexpected item in backing, 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 backing. Take your change. As soon as the rope starts pulling you, all right? Oh. Hello, Miriam. Right, off we go. First to take up the challenge is Aaron. Hold on! Hold on! If I was on TV and I had to do this for just some guy, I'd be like, no thanks. Oh, he's dead. Dead! dead. <laughs> 31 seconds, a little way off Tanner's expectations. Right. My performance in the challenge was crap. <laughs> oh. Come as soon as you start the Off to the guillotine. I start the watch. Dom is a Royal Marine, but hasn't won a challenge yet. Go. Will Dom be naming nature over the sea? Probably not. Tanner's getting excited. Tanner's like, oh, well done. 23.31 seconds. Oh. We'd have expected more from the big Geordie. Apparently not. I wasn't disappointed in my performance today at all. Um, it was one of them challenges that if the boat drives, if the boat driver slows down and, or takes a corner sharply or slows down and speeds up, then you're off. Good you're off, guys, girls. So he his only challenge victory so far was in salsa dancing. This is a little bit of a, like a sketchy challenge, actually, because now that I think about it, what Dom did just say is actually quite correct. They could there could be a producer on this boat who's like, go a little bit slower. We want this guy to stay on longer so he wins the date for more drama, girls. Or like, go really fast, go really fast, and they come flying off and have an accident. <laughs> Oh my god. I bet production chooses these tasks for several different reasons. I bet one of them is like to distract all these boys with all this like nerves and emotion of like what they're actually getting up to on that day. I bet they're also choosing them because they can kind of make them as difficult or easy as they want depending on who they want to go on a date with Miriam. Do you know what I mean? Sneaky, sneaky little snivelling snake. Sneaky sneak. Oh snake. I'm a sweater little sneaky snake. <laughs> Oh, pixelation. I can't. Oh, 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 into the sun. Everybody clap. Once again, we're getting lower and lower. Bloody well. 
What was that? A time of 22.19 uh, seconds means that after our first three Scott competitors, needs to be put in the bin. Scott is in last place behind Dom and Aaron, who's now guaranteed of at least third place. Right. I didn't think it'd make any difference to me in anyway. Um, I think, in a way, it's just like maybe a little bit of fun for everyone. But this is more than Clocked a bit of the fun pageant. for Tom, who's been victorious in all but one of the physical challenges so far. Oh, knows so Tom's in the lead. performance in the challenges can sway Miriam in her choice of date. Aussie new boy Rhett is also taking his first challenge seriously. Okay, try your hardest. Try your hardest, girl. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite competitive with all of them, but uh, I think especially Tom. Do you know? Uh, do you know? Do you know? One of the things you need to know about me, everybody, if you don't know, if you don't join us over on the Twitch, come and join us over on Twitch. It is like Saria Plays. I am incredibly competitive. If there was a word I think Rolly would use to describe me, let's say a non X rated word like bitch, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> bitch, or dev, he would probably say competitive. This woman is dirty. I think he's, uh, he looks like the guy that's uh, been leading at uh, the front at the moment when you succeed in a challenge. It's, it's a, it's a I'm hanging off your every word. I can't believe you can even like speak like, like this. Amazing. The caliber, the, the can. can this? And it's Tom who goes first. Hey, Right, here we go. Is she dead? What's this? I was like we're watching CSI She Mail. I can't say that. That looked pretty rough. He's got a degree. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Like that, did yeah. I didn't realise that was part of the challenge. Boiled so, alive. A time of 1 minute 3.43 oh, seconds. Um. A massive lead over Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> now you've got to have it the other side, that's it. We'll give you a bit of a tip. The longer you hold on, the more chance you've got of winning. All right. Is that helpful? So funny. Oh, you're right, so right. funny, on, Tanner. Ready? ready. Right, this guy yes, is, last to go. is the newest the newest lady, the, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the one from Australia. Can you do it, sis? Everyone's excited. So, can he beat Tom's time? Get off the Oh, xenophobia is it? Get him off. Will he win? <laughs> He's off. Yeah. Uh, I kind of hate the idea that they've just pulled them out to sea and then just like left them there. <laughs> That's so frightening. What did he get? What did he get? Tom seems I'm on the edge of Max. fallen short of his time. Uh, he's right. 44.32 seconds is only good enough for Oh, look. Place. He's upset. Uh, unfortunately, my hand slipped uh, with the rope and I fell off. But uh, if I had another 15, 16 seconds, oh. you know, I could have hit Tom. Yeah, well, if your grandma was wheels, she would be bicycle. Five red-blooded hunks are competing for the attentions of Miriam, a stunning model from Mexico. What the guys don't know is that the gorgeous Miriam grew up as a boy, not a girl. She's a transsexual who, to this day, is every inch a man below the waist. Wow! Did you hear that language? My goodness. Okay. Right, should we try and unpack that a little bit? Listen, listen again. Should we listen to that again? She's a transsexual who to this day is every inch a man below the waist. Every inch a man below the waist. No wonder why there's an entire generation of people that absolutely despise trans people because of the nonsense like this that they used to peddle on TV that trans people are out here to somehow trick people. No, sis, we're out here to just live our lives. We just want to exist. I don't really care. I don't really care what you think about me, but I do have a right as a human being to exist how I see fit on this planet. What I'm doing does not in any way harm anyone else on this planet. 
Thank you. I don't care what you say. I don't care what your opinions of me are. I don't care what you're going to be like, oh my God, X, Y chromosomes, blah, blah, you'll always be a man. I don't care. I don't care, sis. I don't care. Shout into the void. Doesn't matter. I'm still here as a human being and my right to exist is protected. So get over it. I've got no interest in talking to you. Oh, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> but will victory be enough to guarantee some quality one-on-one -on -one time with Miriam? No. Well done, guys, all of you. Another easy challenge? Yeah, yeah, yeah not bad. bad. You <laughs> 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 to announce who's going to go on the date. Well, it's Tom, isn't it? We know it is. Aaron, coming out another with me. Congratulations, Aaron. Wait, so Guys, what's the point? Congratulations, you've got to go straight back to the villa and we'll see you tomorrow for the next challenge. So what's the point of these challenges? What's the point of the challenges? If Miriam just gets to choose, what's the point? What is the point? What was the point of all that? What was the point? What was the point? What was the point? What was the point? Bye, guys. Bye, girls. Bye, bye, bye girls. Bye, bye, girls. Have no, more girls. Well, actually, I thought it might have been. Yeah, there. you might. Yeah, everyone else had a date, and new guys have just got here. Oh, I so see. So he hasn't had a date yet. I yeah. to go out on a date with him because. Well, Rhett hasn't either. I haven't spent too much time with him. Mir, I am. And I thought it was time for me to go out on a date with him. Okay. Uh, there was a point where I did think uh, I would be going home without getting a date, which would have sucked. Uh, but I'm glad that I got it. Whilst Aaron prepares for his date, the rest of the boys have arrived back at the villa. Aaron's gone out on a date. Today. Hello, ma'am. Miriam, and I'm sure they get on really well. He's, he's really sweet. He's a really nice guy. Ooh. And um, he tries Why don't you really, date really him, hard then? as well. And I think his downfall is that he does try yeah. a bit yeah. too hard. I think Miriam chose him because he hasn't gone yet and he was going to feel left out. Miriam is uh, so confident. I could never be in a situation like this. My nerves would be all over the place, especially if production were like, don't fucking tell anyone anything, Luxaria, or you'll die death. I would be like, <sighs> for me, being upfront about my status as a trans woman in this world is probably one of the most important things. I mean, I am a huge list of other things before you get to that fact about me, but lots of other people seem to care about that fact. So a lot of the people in my life know that I am, especially in the dating scene. I always will be upfront because it's just safer. He's Mr. Lover Lover, so he's gonna be like- Mr. Lover Lover, oh, I've forgot about that reference. songs, touching her face a little bit more. Eyeing her up, you know what it's like. Uh, Eyeing her up. No, he's, he's, he tries to be smooth, so he's going to be all over her. There'll be no chance for poetry or sweet nothings on this date. It felt so good being picked. And then uh, when I found out what it was, oh, top banana. I thought, let's just grip it up. Top Jet banana. Skiing. Jet skiing. Oh, that's fun. How can you learn about each other while jet skiing? Is going jet skiing a date? Is it technically a date? I mean, you're not getting to know each other. You're just doing an activity together, right? I mean, I guess it is. I guess it, I guess doing activities together is dating. Would you, in the comments, let me know, would you consider going jet skiing dating, like a date? I don't know if I would consider it a date, but I have done it. So maybe it is, but I feel like talking about it before and afterwards would be like the day, like going jet skiing, then going to dinner would be a date. Do you know what I mean? Cause then you could talk about all the exciting things you experienced and how much you loved it or hated it or what you saw in the water or blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? Like screaming at the top of your lungs is not a date. Ooh, we spinning lady. So she, she gripped me a bit tighter. So uh, I obviously did that quite a few times. With Miriam in such close proximity, there is always a danger that Aaron will feel her secret pressing against him. Ah, you bitch! Oh my god! Oh my god. As if they couldn't say anything more ridiculous, he might feel her secret pressing against him. This is how I know, this is how I know, like regular folk have no idea how trans people even work, how they function in this world. You will never, as a trans woman who's been on hormones as long as Miriam has, who's what, I, was, I think it's about 10 or 11 years, I think she said in the first episode, you would not just be like, how am I gonna say this without sounding incredibly crude? Full mast on a jet ski, sis. Good heavens. Not gonna happen when you're pumped full of estrogen. It's just not gonna happen. So no, he's not gonna feel her secret pressed up against him because that's not how biology works. He was very careful, you know, that nothing happened to me and not watching out for me, which that was very nice of him. A strong believer in sexual equality, Miriam decides she's had enough of riding pillion. I 
think I'm a better driver. <laughs> better driver says yes. What about his secret pressed up against Miriam? Uh, Women drivers, eh? Oh, casual misogyny, women drivers, eh? Actually, women are involved in less traffic incidents per year than men are, so... Uh, excuse me? Statistics taken from osvlimited.uk. Men are very naughty. It went quite well. Uh, we didn't get to say much, because uh, it's quite loud when you're on it. But uh, we had a few moments. Yeah! Uh, especially when we were riding into the sunset together. Oh. It was good, bro. Like um, just going the jet ski, you know, and get to see the sun and drive around. It was it was very fun. Well, I'm glad you had a nice time because you're about to be transphobically attacked. Night has fallen and Aaron is back at the villa with Miriam after the date. As usual, Miriam has devised a little nighttime entertainment. You ready, Ray? Yeah. yeah. We played a game. It involved a hat with lots of bits of paper in it, and on each bit of paper was a, a secret about one of us. Um, so we went around taking turns, picking the paper out and reading out some of the secrets. And oh, Miriam God. had to guess who that secret belonged to. Right. Who has snogged a guy called Tom? <laughs> Scott? <laughs> You asking me? Yeah. Yeah, it was me, yeah. He, did you kiss yourself? <laughs> no, I didn't kiss him myself. There's another man called Tom, yeah. <laughs> Some of the other guys have kissed guys as well, you know, it's nothing... You know, we're all heterosexuals in the house, obviously we wouldn't be here. You know, from an Australian perspective, you know, we, we just don't do that. You know, we're blokes, you know, we like women. Well, you know, you, you've got to try everything, haven't you? Can't die not, not kissing a bloke. Did we just get a, like a peek into some sort of like homophobia there? Like that was clearly brought up in order to ridicule. Like who wrote the secrets about these guys? Did they write them down themselves? And then Miriam had to guess which one did which? Because I struggle to think that Scott would just randomly write, I made out with a guy called Tom. And put it in a hat as a secret. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I would think that there would be lots of other things before you got to that. And the idea then that that Australian guy was like, no, we like women. Everyone in Australia likes women. All the men in Australia like women. It's like, hmm. That's also not correct. So that's an instance of homophobia. This show is just jam packed of all the obias. Who claims his special talent is being able to run a minute mile in designer stiletto shoes and drag while not spilling a drop of flaming sambuca? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, he got it. Do you do that very often? No. I've only done it once. Only once? But it was the best night of my life. Right, oh. so, so this guy who was like, Nah, sorry mate, we only kiss girls in Australia. Has run a minute in stilettos dressed in drag. I don't understand what the point is. What is the point of this weird little... Surely, surely some of these guys have to have some introspection. Like that guy Tom there was like, yeah, you should try everything just to see if you like it. I mean, like that's very basic terminology, but I sort of agree with him with that. I'm like, yeah, how could you not go through life like not trying out the things that you've thought about and wondered? Like, how can you not do that, you know? As long as it's between consensual adults, obviously should go without saying. But for him to be like, Oh yeah, I've done this, but then be like, nah, nah, in Australia we like women. There's just an undercurrent that I just don't like there. I, I don't know if I have the exact words how to explain it. I'm sure there's philosophy majors who can say it a lot better than I, but I just don't like how that guy came across then. It might be the fact that he is 24. That's still quite young. I know a lot of straight men that don't really grow up until they hit about like 28, 29, 30. So... There's room for doubt, but I still sort of still think that came from a place of ignorance, do you know? Who right. once poured his hard-working ex a bath with rose petals, candles, and a massage. That's more like you? No, it wasn't me. No? Sounds Scott? good, yeah. Scott, it was a quiet one. You know, he's really nice. Like, nothing bad. And I have nothing bad to say about him. This guy's just so nice. Oh. <laughs> so... That, see the levels of secrets there. So one of them was, I've kissed another boy called Tom. And one of them was, I drew a bath with rose petals for my ex. Like one of those is really incendiary. Do you know what I mean? In an environment like this, where the production knows what the outcome's going to be and like what the storyline is they're going with. They're trying to tease that these guys are somehow like... Oh, I don't even know. Don't even know. It's like they're trying to tease that they're not straight, but they are self-identifying as straight. So it's like... 
Oh, I don't know. I don't know, sis. I don't bloody know anymore. The woman was too stunned to speak. Scottish was so easy and so romantic. I used to do like, other things, like leave little messages in her pockets when that. she used to go work, things like that. And mine are all like... Who did I first... Imagine, 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 imagine. That is basic. You should love your significant other. Where has this concept come from that only recently in my life have I been hearing about this, that people only just now are loving each other? Of course you should leave, like, lovely little messages for your significant other. Of course, if they've had a really hard day at work, it might be nice if you stepped out of your selfish zone and ran them a bath with some petals to show them how much you love them. Where has this concept come from? Like, I don't know what it is, but it feels very much like these types of men feel that showing any level of affection, even if they are in love is somehow weak and vulnerable. Of course, if my boyfriend came home from a long day at work and he was like, oh, I really fancy a bath, of course I'd run him a bath. How ridiculous, utterly ridiculous that you couldn't, uh, ow, it makes me ill. I'm like, how are these people, have, have they ever actually been in love? Like judging each other because they're doing something nice for their partners? What? Unhinged. Some with two friends and a girl. What? Who did? Person with who got a foursome with two friends and a girl? Who a did? Foursome with two oh friends and a girl. Oh my god. Oh my god. Who would do that? Two, do two do that? friends and a girl. That was you? Yeah, that was me. Um, they're not secrets because everyone who knows me knows all about them, and I'm not embarrassed about them at all, otherwise, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have told anybody, I wouldn't have written them down. It was a foursome, but not in like a, not in a seedy type of way. I find out a lot of stuff that, that I never, that I never knew, you know, and it really so I mean, like, between consenting adults, like, have a sex with as many people as you want. It's not really seedy, I think, to be, just to discuss it as seedy is very strange, but attitudes have 100% changed in the 15 to 20 years that has passed since this was filmed. So... Now in the age of like hookup apps, internet dating, everything happens at such a fast pace that you could easily find people that are also interested in doing whatever it is that you're interested in doing. If that's foursomes or more, then that's up to you, sis. But interesting that he said there, oh, I'm not embarrassed to talk about this. Like I'm not embarrassed, but as she was reading that, you could see him flush. You could see his face go bright red. Like he's clearly a bit embarrassed about that. So whether the production staff have like delved deep and asked them really personal, intimate questions during the casting of this show to use at this time, I think that might be the case. You know, I think that might be the case. And now maybe some of them are a bit like, kind of wish I hadn't said that, girls. It really so surprised me a lot. Okay. That's me, Vic. Oh, on my gravestone, I'm going to have no regrets. Yeah. And I don't regret anything I've ever done in oh, the past. they're drunk, though, as well, aren't they? Because, because it, it, it makes me... Yeah, but it, I, I, whoa, 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 I'm, I'm talking, do you mind? It makes me the person I am today. I don't think the Red is gonna... I don't think the guys are gonna accept him, because... No one ever does. This guy here, he's been... always, like, interrupting the questions and feeling more important than everyone else. I, I felt quite uh, um, accepted at first, and then... You know the real reality set in that I was competition. Yes, and, of course. Uh, I what do you expect? Things got a little bit sticky last night. Mm -hmm. As Miriam uh -huh. heads off to bed, sticky. the boys retreat to the lounge, Bye, and it soon becomes clear that the tension between Dom and the new boy Rhett da -dom. is growing by the minute. Right, growing by the minute. Another pun. Hang on, hang on. Oh, 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 hang on. Terrible microphones. I think Dom. I uh, got a bit upset with me. I think I over-talked him, uh, maybe, you know, once once too often. I failed to school. Listen, and I'm going to fail taking the risk. When I fucking talk, when I you fucking talk, talk you fucking listen. Even though I didn't like the lad, I was quite willing to give him a chance last night. Um, but little things that he, he does that really piss me off. Now, what I've noticed about you is, somebody starts talking, and because you think that you've got a better opinion, all right, you fucking butt in and you talk over them. The thing is, I wasn't going to back down. And I'm going to stand up for myself. I mean, I'm a terrible interrupter because I have ADHD. But also, I will apologise immediately as soon as I know that I'm doing it. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry that I'm interrupting you. But this is very feisty. But they are, look at how many, like, alcohol bottles are around them. They have, like, I can at least see four right here. So they are pretty drunk. It's late at night. This new guy has come in to threaten and destabilise the competition. So, of course... 
Tensions are high, girl. Is this what the point of like, oh, we're, they're red hot blooded men who are gonna fight for Miriam girls. Throw them off a cliff and see who swims for a cock. Good heavens. Is it that? Now, if you do it again, me and you are gonna go to fucking war. All right, you're, free to it. Oh. you're a you marine. Can't no, you control no, no, your emotions a bit better than this? Oh, I they just, are drunk. I had enough of it last night. Um, and so I just told him, I basically told him in no uncertain terms that if he, if he, if he didn't stop what he was doing and sort himself out. He'd get back hands, a girl. Do not fuck with me. No. Seriously. Or I will fucking... Tom, come on. Sit, Someone sit, needs sit, to sit, step sit, in. Sit. There's a lot of Where's production? Where's security? A lot, faces. a lot of veins swelling out the side of people's faces. Oh, it is next the next morning. morning. Everybody's dead. A oh. dead body. If that had happened in any other show, for example, Big Brother or The Bachelor or something like that, they would have sent some people dashing in to split that up because that could have gone any which way. And now we're led to believe that, like, oh, the night has happened and it's the morning after, girls. Oh, everything's pretty sunshine and sparkles. Oh. Did that de-escalate any further than that? Because we just saw a man literally standing up and shouting at someone sitting down. These are four original contestants back in the lounge. I can't believe you come in and you're saying, yeah, I'm a big Aussie boy and I can drink you under the table and he had two beers and <laughs> two beers. fell on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst Rhett remains alone in the bedroom. A lot of the guys will tell you that we, you know, it all got established and it all got sorted out, but personally, I don't think it did. I think it's all still there this morning. And I'm not convinced I still feel yeah, the same there you go. yesterday. At he's got moment, a brain. My, my, pers my personal feelings on Brett is exactly the same. I just think he's an absolute prat. I have been feeling ostracised a little bit. Uh, you know, at the start it was quite welcoming, but as soon as there was competition... You look like an uh, extra from know, Skins. I think they've kind of got together and, you know, they've bonded. You know, and I haven't had that opportunity for them to... The thing is, in any... Oh, that is a hideous pose, sir. Put it away. In any of these shows, it's always the same thing. As someone comes in halfway through, they never, uh, never, never really accepted into the larger group. Because that's the reality TV aspect. There is some level of camaraderie between people who've been there since the beginning. It's just a fact. Like, I can think of so many other shows that this happens on. Can you? They really accept me as one of the guys. Oh, pixelations. Oh. But really, it's it's do or die now. You know, this is really such a weird. Win, imagine it? being filmed just like drinking water in your bed. Like imagine a camera crew people being like, "What are you gonna do without water? Are you, are you gonna have a little sip? Is that what you're gonna say? Go on then, yeah. She's got a cock." It's it's do or die now. You know, I really want to win and, and just show exactly how strong I am as a as an athlete and a, a competitive sportsman. I mean, sure, go for it, sis. You do you. Of course, not all our challenges are macho madness. Miriam loves real men, but she's also looking for sensitivity. So today's challenge is designed to bring out the softer side in the lads. It's Crochet. a sensual massage. The lads will be given a crash course by top masseur Francis and then let loose on our lovely playmate Stacy and goes in. Oh, they're back! But what the guys don't realise is that... These girls are just on a free holiday, aren't they? They're on a free Ibiza holiday and have absolutely no idea what the whole concept is. Miriam will be watching this little masterclass from a safe distance on a TV monitor. Oh, under so the stairs. In discretion. We don't talk about her anymore. Bingley bong. Right, what's this? On the playmates. Take it between your four feet of your. your but who's gonna. <laughs> Listen, you can and you go. What? Yeah, no, I got a wrist injury from yesterday. Did you hear about the challenge yesterday? No. Yeah, he was giving a massage and talking. Oh, we had to be tied, towed behind a speedboat with like a 150 horsepower engine. Tom doesn't stop talking. Is he wearing a top that says, I love your mum? The shoulders in. What you're trying to do is go across. Yeah, he's like, cool. <laughs> the boys have been shown how to massage, but given no guidance on where to massage. <laughs> Serpent! So I have never actually had like a professional massage and this is the thing for me because I actually think touch is quite a physically intimate thing. I couldn't just be like on a beach here and have a random person just be like, I'm gonna touch your bum for a bit. Like that is not it for me, sis. Absolutely not. I don't know how I feel about this bit. This feels very... Uh, is this like throw them off the scent or something? Like I can't think about what, what like, what does the winner of this challenge get? An, a chance to do the same to Miriam? Oh yeah, no, he did. They did say that, didn't they? And they go, they get dangerously close to her secrets. For 
goodness sake. Don't do that again, please. Oh, 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 oh my god. See, we, I feel I'm like. Now. Yeah. I would. That was too touchy. I don't like that. She's not. Yes. This would definitely feel good. Intuitive. Do that again. I think Scott is the loyal one. Miriam. Oh, guys. Teleport. I got jealous today. <laughs> I saw you guys, you know, giving the massage to my friends. So I have to admit, I got a little bit jealous. But the one who's going out on a date with me today is Brett. So she's picked him. He was the last guy who hasn't had a date, but he's only just been introduced. So that would make sense. So it was Aaron was the last of the original cast to get like a date with Miriam. Now it's Rhett. What's going to happen now? I put a whole bag of jelly beans up my ass. She's obviously going to give him a chance on a date to see what's like one-on-one -on -one away from away from the atmosphere in the Ooh, house. He seems a lot less hungover in that um, talking head section there. In every other one of these ones where they have like, uh, the backdrop is like, I don't know, the islands or whatever it is. They always seem like they're a little bit hungover. Like it, they've just literally been plucked out of their bed to answer these questions. And they're all a bit like... Uh, because usually when Dom speaks, he has like pauses in his sentences. And I think that's because he's like stinking hungover. But here, listen. Well, it's like one on one away from. Away Clear from as a bell. In the house. At least Every I think he's a goodbye. Joke arrogant Aussie prick, to be honest. I thought I was going at the start, you know, because uh, everyone else had been on dates except for me. And uh, I think it would have been a bit harsh of Miriam to vote me off tomorrow if uh, uh, she didn't get to really know me and things like that. Mm, is that is some humble pie? Oh my two. God, look at those jeans. Look at that shirt. Look at those jeans. Oh, wow. Daytime tweed with an evening chiffon. The 2000s are here and they are living and they are thriving. Also, it kind of looks like that dinghy is having a shocked moment. <laughs> ah, what's happening? This evening's date is a romantic dinner for two in a cove so secluded it can only be reached by boat. See, that's a date. I choose red because I haven't get to... Like, going to the cinema as well isn't really a date because, like, I suppose it could be like a fourth or fifth date or something, but first dates seem a little bit strange like that because you need to get to know who you're with. So taking someone to do an activity where you can't really talk to each other is obscene for a first date. Uh -huh. And uh, I feel like, you know, I have to get to know him because she just got here. So the best thing is just go out on a date with him and yes. have a little conversation and get to know each other. Get railed in a sundress in a cave. I'm happy that Rhett got the date because I think she's going to see the side of him that we've all seen. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> hopefully she'll see it anyway. And hopefully if she does see it, I hope she's, she's, she'll boot him out. She's warm. Yes. He's good at, good at boot. My boot. Wellington boot. Wellington boot. What a terrible way to pour champagne. That was all froth. Yes. He's good at Pepsi good at Mac. Audio. Good luck. Oh yes, I really just want to hear the boat. I can't be bothered about hearing all the voices. Just the boat. Right, what was that? Looking for good romance and relationship? It's going to be very, very hard to press her, I think, because he's literally just turned up. Oh, it's so going to be hard to press I'm not her. Thinking it's going to go all, all that great. Yeah, I'm, I'm Why are you think different off. than the other guys? Why am I different? Yeah. Um, I'm genuine. You know, if I say something, you know, it's, it's actually true. Yeah. Do you know how to Sorry, how long was this date? It's now night? No. No. But I'd love to learn. He could obviously. Sorry, what? Have you ever done salsa? Have you ever done salsa? No. No, but I'd love to learn. He could obviously woo and charm her and, and, and really go for it and uh, win her over. Or maybe she'll see through all that crap and she'll realise that he's actually a bit of an arrogant twit underneath. Would I be the type of guy? I actually think I like Tom the most out of this cast. I feel like Tom seems very soft-spoken and kind of a bit sensible. He seems like... 
the most up for anything and kind of respectful person we've seen so far. But he, in the first episode, was like, let's all get naked and sit in the gazebo wanking. I could not believe it. So, I don't know. <laughs> but I do feel like this date and the date that she had with Aaron are wildly outbalanced, don't you? I that you would normally go for. You're getting that. I'm getting that. Yeah. I had so much fun with him today. And we have a lot in common, as I say. And he's just like a really nice guy, though. And this is perfect. And right now, I think, you know, you're, you're really good fun and you're down to earth and, you know, you're romantic. You know, dinner by the water with the waves crashing in against the shore is just fantastic. With champagne and seafood. Seafood, my favorite food. Is that true that I was just make you horny? I'm horny anyway. <laughs> He's totally different than the other guys, yeah. Is he? Because he's not those kind of person like they likes to drink a lot, you know, he's he's really focused on what he does. And I, I enjoy his one. chocolate. Is Do you like chocolate? I love chocolate. The good thing about chocolate is if you eat it slowly. Is that a wedding ring? first there was like a physical attraction but there's also now the personality that I've I'm attracted they're to. They're really like, hamming up this day. She's, she's really quite sincere and sweet and also very very mature. Oh my god is Aaron I going or Dom? <laughs> Dom might be going. I think I've definitely uh, uh, impressed her to the point that she thinks I'm a decent guy and a nice guy. Really? Total shit for me. <laughs> Just everywhere. I think yeah, I have caught up. I was getting a little bit worried that I didn't really, I didn't really have a chance to get to know her. I think the date went really, really well. Oh mate, I want to win it like crazy now. To wave bye bye. Oh my god. Okay. Six, so for some reason, this episode doesn't actually have any like. There's something about Miriam. We're coming back to the episode, girls. There's no like commercial breaks. It's just straight into the next scene. So that's why this one feels a little bit faster paced. Meanwhile, back at the villa, the rest of the guys are preparing a barbecue, and Dom has something on his mind. Oh god. Wait, that, Toby's conspiracy theory might be correct. You know the one he had right at the start. Yeah. I, thought I was thinking about yeah, that one. I was like, bet it is. I'm not going to say what it is. But if anyone knows what his conspiracy theory was... No, I can't remember. <laughs> Toby was one of Miriam's original suitors, and from the moment he met her, he had suspicions about Miriam's true identity. Do you still think she's a man? No. Because <laughs> you were convinced. <laughs> I was getting paranoid, OK? So I thought, all the models were men. Just check for big hands and Adam's apple. Toby's thoughts have obviously been playing on Dom's mind, That's and he voices his concerns in a song. <laughs> Wow. Okay, so we're now about to hear a really transphobic song in which the secret has been revealed. I feel a little bit nervous just watching this because I'm like, if I was in this situation, how the fuck would I feel? In a song. In a song. Her name is Miriam. She had a really spotty back. I massaged her back. Didn't want to look at her crack. It could have been hairy. And that would have been scary. It would have been just my luck. If she'd had a cock. <laughs> Wait, so we there's been a bit of this episode actually edited out. So we didn't see Dom massaging Miriam, did we? We didn't see that. So he's just said there that he gave Miriam a massage. We didn't see that. So I'm having to draw some wild conclusions here because did he win that challenge? No, he didn't, did he? It's all been cut out, so we can't tell. So apparently he gave Miriam a massage and she has a pimply back. <laughs> That's the conspiracy theory. <laughs> I was talking about it. <laughs> it could still be true. <laughs> and what would we do <laughs> to find out she's a man? <laughs> and we've been doing all we can <laughs> to trap her and pull her. <laughs> and she wants us to pull her. Off. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be shy, eh? <laughs> what a great day. <laughs> Has anybody seen her? In a little bikini. She always wears a skirt. Maybe a cock pokes out. <laughs> Fortunately, conspiracy theories are relegated to the back burner with the return of Rhett and Miriam. Wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. Okay. If someone wrote a song like that about me, I'd be a bit like, oh my God. Oh my God. I'm a little bit speechless at that. That is what? That was a transphobic song for the ages, wasn't it? Um, I mean, what can I say? Factually, yes, it's been confirmed that she does indeed have a penis by someone who's been a medical doctor for two years, but still that has left me speechless. That now leaves everything open for, like what? I don't get it. Like why? I don't get now how this show can continue in a way that the production team would want it to be. Now it's like, almost like everyone knows and is going along with a secret or everyone has a, a big suspicion, shall we say, and is going along with this now for what purpose? We're halfway through the season. So we've got another four episodes of this, but now there's like a brewing rumor danger aspect involved that Miriam has no idea about. So now the game has changed from generally insidious for everyone and almost a gotcha moment for Miriam, which is in absolutely no circumstance safe for her. Wow, this is like, I'm getting like, I don't know, carry vibes. Like they're all gonna set her up and then just be like, pour blood on her and be like, uh, uh. Hola. Right, okay. What fucking hell, look at that. Oh my God, what on earth you got? <laughs> <laughs> had one of the longest dates out of everyone. Uh, so they didn't get back till quite late. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. I got back and, you know, she said to me on the, when we were eating on the date, that, uh, you know, she's got to share the love around with all the guys. So, you know, as soon as she got back, she dived in straight for Dom. You learned some things today, didn't you? <laughs> no, I learned from you, point like that. <laughs> it, it makes things difficult between Dom and Red. Like when we go back to the bell, I can see the jealousy, you know, and I can see that, like, Dom doesn't really like Red, and I think everybody, you know, just should be friends and they, they should give him the opportunity to get to know him. Well, they're not here to make friends, sis. I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. I know that's, I know that, I know that English is her second language, but in this show, it's a competitive aspect. So of course they're not all gonna be like camaraderie, laddie, all lovely. What I don't get though is what happens to the contestants that are voted out? Do they stay here or are they just literally flown back to wherever they've come from, which is England apparently? Oh, I don't, I feel really uneasy now. It's the morning, she's got gout. What's gonna happen? It's to early you? morning at the villa, where it's ju judgment day. Judgment. It's a little bit tense. Day. I mean, it's eviction day. So one of us is going again. I actually don't know who it might be. I have no idea. I assume it's gonna be Aaron. And I think that's only because he didn't have a very good date and he hasn't been featured that much in this episode, but she also hasn't really spoken to Tom, uh, but she might send Red because he's the most recent, but I feel like Aaron's gonna go, so. Ugh. I'd say it's like a nervous tension because now anybody could go, to be honest. Uh, oh, but also they also get to win 10K, don't they? So it actually would behoove all of them if it was only win a date with Miriam. Now that there's this suspicion that she is trans, it wouldn't behoove them to out her instantly because that would kind of disrupt the show and their chance to win 10,000 pounds, which is actually quite a lot of money for a show like this in a week back then. So maybe there's an aspect now of like, we know, but we're playing along because we want money, which almost makes it even weirder. It all just depends on whether like he I'm seems so hungover. To enough to stay. For the eviction, this is not gonna be Wait, like what? one of the most. Depends on whether or not we've impressed Miriam enough to stay. Oh, oh. For I the eviction, that. this is not gonna be like one of the most difficult I've ever done because with uh, with Toby wasn't that difficult because at the first. Day that I went out and Production I told I kind of knew it wasn't for me. Gone. And Mark was didn't like him. Gone. It's going to be very difficult. Neither Tom or Scott have put a foot wrong in the last couple of days and seem in relaxed mood. Is this the first time that both of us have been in the bath together since we've been here, or have we had? A, is this our second encounter? It's the first time that um, like actually you've been in the bath with me, um, fully clothed, of course, because you do try and get in naked. Um, but I think everyone has actually been in the bathroom with me so far, so it's quite nice. Tom and Scott may think they're sure. safe, but the other three don't see. The Les Lounge. What?
what is it with these horrible slogan shirts? The Les Lounge. I love your mum. Hello, mum. The Les Lounge. Oh, get a grip. Also, what was that scene in the bathtub? What was that all about? It was like, is this... The only thing I can think of that they keep including these bits is to be like, oh, look, they're all secretly gay. Tom and Scott may think they're safe, but the other three don't seem so confident. We right. feel that if it's one of us guys, it's like, well, hang on a minute. That's a bit unfair. Because if Fred stays in, he's literally been a day and a half, uh, two days. That's We've true. been for a week. They've just got loads of time to lounge about in the sunshine. Money on Aaron, I'd say. Yeah, I just think Aaron. He's, he's, he's a lovely guy. He's maybe just a little bit too nice, I think. A little bit nervous. Got the same eviction. Oh, he's got a right little Don pussy Pikes nose, isn't he? Very well, Miriam. They're quite close. Quite sort of touchy feely. I, I think he's on safe. Who's going to do? Um, it'd definitely be red. You are hungover, sir. I really don't know who's going to go. I, I would have said red, definitely, because uh, he made a really bad impression when he first came in. But now they've had a date, and she might have seen another side to him. Yeah, and it was a long date, wasn't it? I think everyone's got an equal chance of of going in this eviction, so I think everyone's prepared for it. When we're standing there, this is going on. It's going to be even worse because we really don't know who's going to. Oh, surprise! Very Polaroids. Time. It's almost eviction time. Any last? Who thoughts? will be America's next top model? I understand it's difficult for them to you know, have a new guy, but we all here to chill out and be nice to each other and be friends. I think he's been sidetracked by him arriving. I think he's really more focused on Red yeah, right now, he's... and he's trying to cause some problems with Red. Right. So what does that mean? He's the quieter one, isn't he? Yeah, he's quiet, but uh, I just thought when I talk to him, you know, he always has something good to say. Mm. I'm seeing a whole new personality to him. Yeah. We were doing the massage, and I was watching how I was massaging my friends, and he kind of was flooring with them, and, and I didn't like that. Mm. It was a moment that I got jealous. <laughs> Right. Yes. So what does it mean, Miriam? Yeah, he's a happy kid. He's always happy. He's always smi smiling and he's and, doing very well. And do you, is he most popular with you? Yeah. Oh, who was that? Tom? Scott? Dom? <sighs> Alan? Red? Oh, she's on the beach. Right. Oh, here we go. Rail guns at the ready. Guys, you don't need me to tell you that it's crunch time. As time goes by, the stakes get higher. Who's it? What's going to happen? Just I love Dad. Days top. Oh, wait. Are they drawing on their own? Are they drawing on their own tops? Are they only allowed to wear white tops and they're doing it? The Les Lounge, I love Daddy. I don't understand. I'm one of you could be walking away with £10,000 and going on the holiday of a lifetime. Right, who's it going to be? But in just a few minutes' time, one of you will definitely be packing your bags and, and the executed. Villa. And only Miriam will know who that is. Yes. Guys, this is very difficult for me. I spent a lot of time with you guys. Red, I think you're arrogant. I think you need to stop that, but I had Clocked a very the good pageant. day yesterday, and I really enjoyed it a lot. Tom, you've been good, you've been really nice, you're funny. I like that. Aaron, you've been feeling like more energy in the challenge, and the last that you've been very good. I'm very proud of you. Maybe and, he's not. Um, seems like if you like to floor a lot with my friends, and I'm always have to tell you, wash your hands, don't go too far, and it seems like you've been focused more in red in his guy here. I understand it's difficult for you guys, you know, have a new guy, but you know we have to Maybe give him a Dom. chance. Scott, I don't have too much to say of you because you haven't been smoking that much, but you've been good. So, that is so quick! So quick! I have to go is... There's no budget on this bit. Oh! Damn. Gagged at the pageant? I have really conflicting feelings about that because although he sang that horrific transphobic song... Oh... God, do I have conflicted feelings? No, he probably should have gone. Maybe production have actually stepped in again here because he's sang that song. Maybe that's exactly why they were like, oh, no, you need to get rid of Dom because he's too close to the secret and it will ruin the last episodes or something. But I actually, weirdly enough, felt like they had the most connection throughout this entire thing. Mind you, it kind of does feel between like her and Tom, her and Dom and her and Scott. But wow, okay.
The music is like he's been ejected into space. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit shocked, to be honest. Um, because obviously we're all nervous. We all thought it could have been us. It's, everything's a surprise. Like every, every single bit of it. It's just so nerve-wracking. It's just it's hard. I think she wants to give Rhett more of a chance. Um, maybe just sort of get to know him a little bit better. And the fact that me and him didn't get on. Why are they giving you an exit me. interview? Like, as you're tidying up your bed? For me to, to go, really. I feel a bit guilty now Dom's gone. You know, we had a bit of a, a row the other night. You know, you know, even though we made this up and everything like that, and it's all cool, I still feel a bit guilty. I am in a little bit of shock, but at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sort of break down and cry about it. Fuck, man, I feel like shit. I feel like, fuck, I didn't feel, think it would be this bad. He's oh, been like my bestest friend. Man. Yeah, yeah, man, it's really hard. You've been closest to him, haven't you? Mm. It has been a week, though, sis. Get a grip. He doesn't fancy me as much as. The other four lads, which, fair one. Wow. Next time. Oh no, no, stop. Wow. I've got some thoughts, my loves. I've got some thoughts about this whole episode. What a completely deranged and unhinged episode today has been. So, the levels of transphobia, I didn't think could get much more intense, shall we say, from the previous episodes. Oh, how wrong I was. In this episode, we got a lovely song about a woman with a penis and how they might be plotting to find out if she does in fact have one. We had some homophobia from the new guy, Rhett, about Australian people. This episode was so weird. I think what's really annoying me as well is that this, the copy that I have has been kind of like spliced out a little bit. It's about seven minutes shorter than every other episode. So clearly when we saw Dom give uh, Miriam a massage in that flashback, right at the end there where they were singing that song and she had a pimply back and they were like, oh, she's a man because of this or a hairy crack or whatever, whatever nonsense he was singing about, does kind of make me go like, what can't I, like, how can I make a judgment about that section? Because it was completely cut out and I can't see it. And I don't know where else to get any other th of these copies from. I'm gonna open this up to you guys in the comments because I feel like today we've seen literally like 40 minutes of solid transphobia from start to finish. And it's kind of put me in a little bit of a weird mood because I actually got nervous watching this show. This played out years ago. Like All the people involved in production have probably moved on with their lives and very rarely even think about this show anymore. But I got a very like intense like nerves watching that because I can see myself in that situation. Like I can put myself in that situation and be like, <gasps> what's gonna happen? Like not into that at all, my loves. I definitely am leaving watching this video today having very strange feelings. Strange? Very strange feelings about this show. I don't like this show. I mean, it was pretty much obvious anyway, but I just, just, once again, it's one of those things where it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse each episode. I can't believe there was someone new introduced at 1am clapping and turning on lights and tickling feet and pulling bed covers off. I'd be so irate if that happened to me. And also, how low budget was that? There was no, like, moment of him being introduced to everyone. It was just, go on, Go and bother them whilst they're sleeping off hangovers. Like, what? Anyway, my loves, let me know what you think about what we've seen today in the comments box below, because this one was a wild one. What an absolute wild ride. And with that, my loves, it's time for the Patreons. You can see yourself scrolling past on the screen here, my lovelies. Yes, you can. And I want to say a massive hello and welcome to CC, Liv Lance, Ray, Neo Mysterio, Connor Adventure, Saoirse Belton, Taylor Gold, Pandora Underhill, Hazel Angus, Camille Sarah, Clink, Sarah, Denise Nasuri, Sophia, Megan, and Elodie Murel. Thank you so much for joining the Patreon, you absolute stunning people. With your support, it allows me to do shows like this because these sorts of shows are very, very difficult for the YouTube algorithm and also the copyright content ID algorithm to allow me to thrive and survive. So thank you guys so much for all of your support. Today's Twitch shout out goes to Colorful Coffee Face. Thank you so much for following me over on Twitch, you stunning woman on the go. And if you want to be featured in my next video's Twitch shout out, make sure you follow me on Twitch. It is Luxaria Plays and I stream two nights a week, Monday and Thursday, my loves. Once again, I want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patreons. Aloria, Dr. Dream Morella, Luke Peterson, Stephanie Neotupski, Beebles32, Shell Herman, Christina Kyle, ContraPoints, Crafty Leaks, Danielle, Dr. A, Jevod, Elizabeth Stone, Eric Castillo, Jen Martin, Jennebeth Herman, Jenny Hendricks, Caitlin Wright, Laura Jane, Laura Jane again, Les Banana, Lisa Pennington, Min Min TM, Moisten98, 
Mariah Sherman, Nixie Tricks, Paolo Rivera, Rachel VC Biscuit, Romano, Ryan Vita, Sasha Smith, Sexy Texy RN, Slampire Queen, Steffi Tech, Travel Tromo, Victoria Corella, and Or Cosmoji. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Thank you guys for your support. And you know what, my lovelies? I'm going to leave it on the note today of don't out people through song. Just don't out people. Don't out people. Please don't out people. Please, 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 please. Even if they've harmed you or even if they're being an absolute asshole, don't out them. It's not fun. It's not fair. And with that, my loves, I will see you in the next video. <gasps> oh, <laughs> I feel gross today.